in, in the context here, we just won the election and we ran on issues. We don't compromise with losers. The liberals don't like our issues, so we don't give up some of them just to show we're nice guys. They are the ones that got beat. The losers compromise if they want to have any participation in the future governance of the country. They compromise. It's also been said, there's another definition of compromises that where both sides get most of what they want. But when it comes to core principle, like we're talking about here in politics, saving the country moving forward, you don't compromise on that. There's no half freedom, there's no half tyranny. It's like I said yesterday, where's the compromise between food and poison? There's no, where's the compromise between good and evil? Now, some people revolt. What do you mean, good and evil? You're saying the Democrats are evil? What? what? The, the direction they're taking the country is not good. Whether they're evil individual people or not, I don't know, but liberalism's evil. What about liberalism do you want? Because I'll tell you, here's the thing about them. Whatever they get is never enough. Never. It's never enough. They are never placated, never satisfied. Patrick in Arlington, Virginia. Great to have you on the EIB network, sir. Hello. Uh, hello, Rush. I'd like to uh, cast my vote and then ask your question about the Fed. But uh, first, I'd like to sing the high praises of Maha Rushi and do a quick shout-out to my conservative parents and now Washington Red Central New York. Um, my vote would be for Chris Christie, first, Jim DeMint, second, Palin and Bachman, third, and then maybe Rudy Giuliani for Attorney General. Um, but they all have to, and this is for me personally, right. stand firm on pro-life values. Right. And that's the first sign for me uh, of what a conservative is. Uh, about the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Now, the uh, debt to GDP ratio is 93%. It's supposed to go up to 102 percent by 2015. I am nervous, and I'd like to ask your opinion about them raising the ceiling and then buying debt. Shouldn't they uh, instead seek to dissolve Fannie and Freddie and move the Department of Education back to the states? Well, yes. In an ideal world, yeah, you get rid of the education department, a bunch of other government institutions, and then you, you, uh, you shut down Fannie and Freddie. Uh, but you have to temper all this with realism. That's an idealistic thing to do. Reagan wanted to close down the Department of Education, for example. Uh, a lot of resistance to it. Here, here's, here's the debt ceiling. This is a trick, by the way. Every Every little commie SOB on liberal cable networks is asking every Republican guest, what about the debt ceiling? What about the debt ceiling? Going to raise the debt ceiling next week? Going to raise the debt ceiling? We're going to run out of money. We're reaching our debt limit. And, of course, they want guys like Cantor and Pence, whoever the guests are, to come on television. Oh, yeah, we got to raise the debt ceiling to keep the government going. Well, then... If, if, you, if you say that we've got to raise the debt ceiling, how can you possibly talk about cutting the deficit? How can you possibly talk about reducing the size of government? Why don't you just let the debt ceiling not be raised and let some stuff... that Because this is not how... Nobody is draconian here. But all of this is a trap. The debt ceiling, anyway... We, we have run out of room under current statutory authority to increase the debt anyway. We have run out of room to increase the debt. So now what they're doing is monetarizing the debt, meaning that the money is monopoly money. We're now going to print money to buy securities. We can't, we've, we've statutory reached the debt limit. You can raise the debt ceiling all you want, but that's... It's all a um, it's all a game. It's it, 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 we're printing money, inflate the currency, made to look like we have a lot of money when well, we don't have any. But I know what you're asking. Rather than raise the debt ceiling, why don't we cut some things? Yep. 
Make the proposition now. Make the proposal now. It'll be real, 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 real interesting to see how people would react to, okay, cut the education department. It's going to be really tough, folks. There have been decades and decades of people ingrained with the notion that the Department of Education equals, oh, what, magic, compassion. You, you make a move to eliminate or even cut the Department of Education then you're going to have to be able to answer the charge. Oh, so you want people to be stupid. Oh, so you're against educating. You must you must be a racist and sexist. You must want to deny the poor their chance to be educated. That's what we need to be hit with. And so you've got to have an answer to that. If you're going to make that uh, proposal. Anyway, I appreciate the call. I really do. i got to say a brief, brief pause, a brief time out here. We'll continue with much more on the EIB Network right after this. Thank you. 